In this tutorial in Cyberlink Audio Director, I'd like to share some tips on getting started in the mixing room. Audio Director has four major screen sections, each called rooms, and the third one from the left at the top on the tab or button is called Mix. And this will get us to the mixing room. Before we look at what we can do here, we need to have some audio to mix. So I'm going to click into my upper left quadrant, into the, the window that has the elements I bring into my audio project. I'll click on the folder with a down arrow. And then I'll take these files and click on the first, hold shift and click on the bottom one and bring them all into our bin here or container. We can now use each of these. Now in order to take something that you have imported uh, for use anywhere in your audio project and put it in a track, all you need to do is hold down on the item with the left mouse button, drag and drop on the track. The order doesn't matter. Uh, you can use any kind of sequence you want. They're alphabetical here in our uh, bin. Now I have three tracks and then a master track. My problem is I have more than three different clips that I want to mix together. How do I do that? Well, there's two ways to add tracks. You can right click anywhere in the empty area and simply click add audio track and it will add another one. So now I have a room here for my piano. But the faster way is to go to the menu bar at the top the second icon over has a picture of a note with a plus key, uh, plus symbol on it. And if you click on that, it will instantly add a track. So that's a one-click operation. It's the most efficient way to do that. So I'll add two more. And we'll drag our strings over and our synthesizer file. So now we have all six of these tracks ready to mix together. Now you notice what Audio Director does. It shows the waveform of each track, but it shows them in different colors. If you decide you'd like any of the track waveforms to be in a different color yet, all you need to do is click on the little uh, box next to the track number, track three, and I can change the color. I can use any one of these base colors here, or I can use any color in the entire color palette by moving the slider or clicking in the box. We'll just pick an orange here and click on OK. So now my drum track is in orange. You can just change that as often as you want. There's another identifier for the track that you can change. You notice that all the icons for the tracks are the same. They're basically a wave form. This is the label for that particular track. If you want something a little more intuitive, all you need to do is click on the icon and it will give you an option of nine to pick from. And so you can leave it on that or change it. Let's go to the synthesizer. That's a keyboard, so I'll change it to the keys. I'll take the piano and change that to keys. I'll take the strings and use the guitar. And I'll take my drums and use the icon of the drums. And uh, I'll take the um, first one and change it to the Looks like a French horn here, but it gives you a different way to do it. If you want a visual symbol to represent uh, something on that track beside the name of the track. So that gives you different options. Now let's look a little bit more at what we can do when we're working with these. We have a series of buttons and let's talk about what each of them does. If I want to play everything as it is when I pull it in, all the tracks are hot, all of them except for the master track are active. So when I click my play or press the space bar, I get to see all of the tracks interacting with each other and hear that. If I want to isolate a single track, I, all I do is click on S for single. And now when I go ahead and play, it will mute all the other tracks. Now it's a little bit deceiving because I can actually have two tracks turned on while the others are turned off. So the S stands for single, but it actually means more than single. 
the M, if I click on the M track, it simply mutes that particular track. So uh, now I will hear every track but track four, my piano track. So you can either isolate tracks by muting them, which is basically turning them off, or you can isolate tracks by clicking the S, which is turning them on uh, to hear tracks mixed together. So that's what those two buttons are all about. The next two that you have that are identical for each track is a symbol of a, uh, a speaker. And if I click this on, it will put a timeline here, which is my volume. And you can adjust the volume all together for the whole track up and down simply by hovering the mouse and dragging up or down to change the volume of the track. Now this is okay, but it gets a little bit problematic if you if you can't exactly leave it at zero. I'll show you a better way to do that. You also, so that's the volume adjustment for each of the tracks. And when you turn it off, you don't see it, but it still uh, has the same value it had when you used it. So you can adjust the volumes of all the tracks in your mix. The second is your panning. It says left to right, which is what panning does. We have a separate lesson on panning. But when I click that on on the track, I see not a yellow line, but a green line. And I can pan from left to right. As I move up, the sound moves to the left side of, this, of the invisible stage, as if there were one. When I move down, it moves to the right side and is diminished on the left. And again, it's hard to get exactly back to where you started. Let me show you a trick then. If you've moved either of these and don't have them where you want and have a hard time getting back to normal, simply right click and go edit clip in edit room. We have tutorials on using the edit room. But then if you click down here with these double arrows, if, if these are uh, depressed, it will expose these two tracks. And then if you click on the right, it will restore each of these to the default. OK, now I have perfect balance in my pan track and I have zero decibels on my other track. When I click back on the mix, if I click on either of these and you can have both showing at the same time, they're restored. So that's an easy way uh, to flip back and forth between the mix screen and the edit screen in adjusting these. You can also, when you have either of these active, use keyframes. We have different lessons on how to keyframe uh, both for volume and for your pan effect. So we'll turn these off right now. So the nice thing about this is when you have these functioning, you can say, well, I want the to, for example, pan the drums so they sound like they're coming from the left side of my invisible stage. And maybe the, I want the piano on the right, I want the synthesizer on the right, and the strings on the left. Or you can adjust the pan and the volume any way you want. You also have just a pure volume slider here uh, that can adjust the decibel level. And the default is uh, zero. And if I go ahead and uh, turn on this volume, and I see this is another way simply to move that same control. So I can either use the slider uh, to adjust it, whether or not I see it on the screen. This will give me my decibel readings. Or I can uh, also use the control over here, the image of the speaker. And again, uh, getting it perfectly to zero, you can double click and go back to the other track to do that. And uh, so when you're done, if you want to save what you've done, all you need to do is do Control S on the keyboard, and that will save it, and you give it a file name as a project. If I want to produce it, I simply click on File and Produce Audio, and it will take the multiple tracks you've put together and create a file. We'll have a lesson on more details about production. We hope you found this useful as you begin to learn your way around the Mix option in CyberLink Audio Director.